How's it going everyone? Today is December 5th. It is a Saturday night. Just got down to the boat. Um, Sid's feeling a little bit better today. She's about the three and a half week mark, I want to say, um, since her surgery. So she is making improvement. Uh, I decided to come down today because the temperatures are going to be going below freezing the next couple of nights and I still don't have my remote temperature sensor set up. So I'm actually lucky that I turned on and uh, set up the uh, dehumidifier because we had a huge amount of rain and if you recall I had uh, just finished up sealing these windows which everything looks good in the bathroom but coming around to the most recent port light that I sealed up. If you recall, I had a, a blender pitcher there uh, to catch the water that was dripping kind of down here. And if you notice the pitcher isn't there, that's because I moved it in here. I was getting ready to dump it and I said I should film it. So yeah, the window seal definitely did not solve the problem. And of course, by the looks of it, that is exactly 1000 milliliters which is a lot of water that the pitcher caught which it's good that the pitcher was there of course which is why i'm going to go put it back i believe that the pitcher did its job and caught most of the water since everything back here is relatively dry this is a little damp back there that towel um, that's kind of why i put it there it doesn't look like any additional water got down to the floor level which is good I actually just felt some moisture when I put my knee down here. So maybe there is some, yeah, there's a little bit of moisture in this chair. It's not too good. So I'm going to have to crank up the dehumidifier, try to suck it out of everything. Um, yeah, it's not good. Oh yeah, and this is, see the paper's wet? It's crinkly. Um, this was, a, so I rescind my previous comments. The seat did get wet picture helped but it looks like some of the water got around it probably running down the wall unfortunately if you recall from some of my previous videos another large area or another large concern was socket up there a large amount of water coming through it which, which you never want water coming through somewhere where electricity goes through but you can see my trusty red cup is filled to the absolute brim so not only did it fill this cup I have to bring it down here to get it out it also overflowed it I'm just gonna carefully oh, up. some. So I did notice a little bit of dampness, um, specifically on the seat here. Um, oh, yep, and then some down in these cushions here in between. When I first came on, I also did notice that the dehumidifier, you see the amount of water in the sink, which means it's been running pretty steadily, which is good. It means it's doing its job, but bad at the same time because that means there's a lot of condensation in the boat, um, which is a byproduct of leaks. So go ahead and dump out this guy here. Of course the one place where I did get everything sealed up is by far the least important because I mean look at the floor the water just goes down into the shower sump <laughs> and like I mean if there's water spilled in the bathroom it really doesn't matter because it's designed to be showered in. Testing the bed out real quick. Now let's see if our above the face port light leaked at all. Nope, doesn't feel like it. And finally, let's check some of the potential spots where water likes to pool in this boat after it rains. So some water likes to come down here by the shaft. There's a little bit, really nothing. Okay, now let's go check the bilge real quick and see how high the bilge has filled. So I usually use that bolt there. I bring the camera up. See the, the bolt reflecting back. I usually use that as an indicator of my, my water level. You know, obviously I do want to get this bilge dry, but that is going to take some time because I need to seal all the leaks first. So I'm not doing any good if I dry it out and it just fills right back up after a rain. Uh, not not as good of news as I would have hoped, especially with the uh, the rear aft cabin port light that I spent a lot of time fixing. So that narrows down our water issues to that one, back here, and back there. And from what I can tell, 
my fix on the actual uh, ceiling hatches turned out to work. Somebody did comment and say that they think the leak coming from here is because of water coming down through the mast. Definitely a possibility. Um, so my plan this weekend is to get up and seal all of the uh, skylight things here, windows, um, get everything sealed with silicone, and wait for the next rain and see if it is the mast. Because I'd rather double check all the fittings, windows, before I start drilling holes in the mast to allow water to come out. I might try relocating the humidifier here over to that corner. Have it out of the way of kind of the center of the boat, it's not annoying and simulating getting onto the boat with one leg. That's another thing I want to do to see if Sid is able to get onto the boat um, without the use of her left foot, which is the one she had surgery on, to get down into the saloon area from the dock. Because if that's possible, then there's the opportunity for her to come on the boat with me um, when I'm here working on it, kind of on the weekends and um, sometimes during the week when the water or when the uh, air temperature goes below freezing. Bada bing, bada boom. Trey's there. Shout out to Fisker for making some of the meatiest scissors I've ever used in my entire life. Didn't even need to use a saw or anything like that. Just chopped away uh, three cuts and took the you see it right off, right through the uh, edge and everything. Looking pretty good, and like I said, should fill or hold quite a bit more water than just that singular red cup. You know, it's the little stuff that really makes you feel like you're actually moving on to the boat finally. So for instance, I don't know, getting stuff like the toiletries kind of organized, this is the V berth, so this is kind of more of like the, I don't know, I guess the, the guest vanity. So um, that's where I put any of the extra toiletry type items I had, you know, just so they can use it um, while they're here. Got a little little soap dish, which is nice. Going to have to Velcro that down so it doesn't slide around while we're sailing. And then in the main bathroom, which is the one that Sid and I will be using, we got all kinds of toilet trees all organized so like I said not super interesting but it does kind of give you that feel that we are finally actually moving on to the boot also not super exciting but I did pick up an extra pair or I would say a new pair of uh, top siders my old ones had some uh, actually had worn through the soles <laughs> and my my feet would get wet every time I would wear them when I was scrubbing the deck or, or you know uh, doing anything with water and uh, plus the, the soles on my old ones they were so old that the rubber had kind of turned like hard and slippery so they actually were not very um, very grippy on the deck and I've been wearing my boots for a while because those have you know they're, they're pretty much brand new and um, it was kind of night and day <laughs> when I realized man it's it's actually a really good thing to have good grip while you're on a boat so I figured I'd had to had to break open the wallet and get a new pair. The banana hammock is looking good. No bananas today, just some apples and pears. So I did find in one of the um, storage areas out in the cockpit area, I found a rail mountable propane grill, which is super exciting. Um, I'm really looking forward to being able to um, you know, have a nice grill while we're out anchored somewhere. This is the mount for it. So this is where the it gets mounted on the actual pole or railing here. And then this is the attachment that, that the grill um, clips into. I think the previous owner used some Loctite on these. Either used Loctite or there's like some corrosion on the threads in there. And this these things were, I mean, next to impossible to get off because the, the placement of the grill wasn't optimal with the new Bimini. Um, so I decided to relocate where the grill was going to be mounted on. And as you can see, that I completely just snapped the, the head off one of these. 
So I did give my uh, my dad when he visited. I gave him one of these. He was he was going to go to the um, hardware store and pick one up for me. If you can't tell, I'm kind of going through an unpacking phase, <laughs> which is why I've been showing you a bunch of just random stuff that I find kind of uh, funny or, or cool for a boat. This is actually a 3D printed uh, Benchy. So this is a benchmark print that's often used to calibrate and determine how well your 3D printer prints because it has a lot of curvature, it has overhangs, and has a lot of little interesting, you know, holes and shapes and stuff like that. So this is from my old 3D printer, which I unfortunately don't have anymore. Um, I sold it on Craigslist. Um, but I was going through a bunch of my stuff back at home, and I figured, hey, it'd be kind of funny to have a uh, 3D, 3D printed boat on my uh, real big boat. I have considered getting a 3D printer for the boat. I haven't been able to find a solid answer as to whether or not the rocking motion and movement while docked will throw off the print accuracy of the 3D printer. I feel like it would, but I could be wrong. It would be nice to have a 3D printer on here because there's tons of little plastic things that would really be beneficial to print. I don't know, for instance, you could print something like a little hook that clips on here and then you have something to hook onto. So, I mean, you could print some of these, and granted, you would probably have to drill in, um, you know, rather than using a sticky pad. Um, you know, I could print clips to hold the wires, or, um, you know, some of these, print some of these, because, um, you know, it adds up, buying all these little, little doodads and things. And I actually found, my dad sent me a really cool um, plastic uh, uh, binocular holder that you can mount up at the helm to hold your binoculars. I mean, that's just one more, you know, another thing, it was like 30 bucks, and it's like, if you could print that, I mean, it'd be a dollar or two dollars worth of plastic to just print that. So there's a lot of little things on this boat that I think would be really beneficial to print. Um, I mean, even something like this, I mean, you know, if one of these snaps, I mean, how the hell are you going to find this oddly shaped piece of plastic online? There's just a lot of little things on a boat, I feel like, that um, could be easily modeled and then printed with a 3D printer, and it'd be very, very cost-effective. I don't know, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts if anyone out there has tried it themselves, or if they've heard of anyone doing it. Um, I, I, really, I really think it'd be a nice addition to the boat. Um, I'm just, right now, as you can see, a little strapped for room. <laughs> Um, so I'm not too, not too sure where, uh, where I'd put it, um, or if it would even work on the boat.